Yo, 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 YouTube. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the top five hardest agents to play in Valorant console. And let's just get right into it. Before we go into our top five, we got one honorable mention, Chamber. Chamber is actually a very simple kit, and especially when it comes to um, Valorant console. The problem is when it comes to his difficulty, it's actually dependent on his the way people shoot and the way people aim. Chamber itself is a very simple kit, so maybe you might think of, wait, he is actually a very easy person to understand, but if you're not good as an aimer in Valorant console, you have effect into the game, right? Like, if you're missing your shots, the agent chamber can easily be replaced by any other of the sentinels and you'll get better results while if you really struggle with actually aiming your gun and you're not getting enough kills per game definitely chamber is not the pick for you so honorable mention we have chamber so to round up to our number five pick we got astra astra herself is a very like i i personally enjoy her she's a lot fun when it comes to placing down her stars placing down fake smokes and when to smoke when to suck in certain areas went to stun certain areas like her kid is actually really good the problem is if you want to be effective in valorant she's not a very good agent to solo queue on she is actually really good under team play if like five manning or something or you're playing a pro game or something or scrims or 10 man like definitely give her a shot she provides a lot of util the problem mostly when it comes to Astros is you're mostly in your um, astral form more than you're actually in more gunfights. However, with even with the high skill ceiling, and especially when to flank, when not to flank, when to play stars, when to fake smoke, he definitely rounds up to our number five pick. That's one of the hardest agents to play in Valorant. Okay, we are up to our number four pick, and who else but KO? KO is the definition of setting up your teammates to get into a long distance gunfight or to break a site and pretty much destroy any sentinel setup he is so good but the problem is he is so difficult when you're solo queuing because you need to learn lineups especially for a lot of his throws or else you're going to blind yourself when to use his molly effectively on the rush and a lot of ko's especially at the lower ranks use these ko's as instant just use the knife right away get instant information but the problem is that's not really how you're supposed to use ko if you're going against a team that insta like rushes or something like that you want to throw that knife to disrupt the timing of them entering onto a site so they have the inability to use their abilities when they're entering onto a site so they're basically like stuck ko is more of an agent that you use to set up your uh, Duelist, not really like solo queue and destroy pretty much lobbies by yourself. You can, there are certain things you can do on certain maps where definitely KO can wreck by himself, but in more, in most situations, most likely you as a KO are just going to be setting up your duelist majority of the time. So to round up our number four pick, we got KO. So we got our number three pick, we got Yoru, and I'm just going to say this, Yoru is probably the most technical agent to play as a duelist and as initiator, basically as a lurker. He, he can pretty much do the, everything from initiating to being a duelist, like his kit does it all. The... The fact that you're able to be on offense and defense constantly, when to TP, when not to TP, when to fake TP, when to flash, when to throw your decoy. And the, there's so much stuff you can do with this kit. The problem is a lot of it is highly technical stuff in Valorant that are not a lot of people know how to do. For example, the timing difference between throwing your flash and TPing at the right time. So when you do TP, the flash explodes right behind you and you're basically there to get the kill while you, the opposing, te opposing team is flash. That's a very hard tech to do and the timing is so precise or else you're cut out to dry. A lot of what Yoru does involves outsmarting your opposing team, but however, it gets to the point where it kind of gets predictable sometimes with this kit. However, at a certain degree, a good Yoru can easily dominate a lobby and is definitely someone you don't want to sleep on. So to round up our number three pick, we got Yoru. For our number two pick, this might be a little controversial. I will consider Raze to be the second hardest agent, the master in this game, and it has nothing to do with her kit. The kit itself is actually pretty simplistic. The problem is the skill that comes with the satchels and when to pop them, when to use them in gunfights, when to get straight into the enemy's face. It really shows a huge 
really big skill gap between silver raises compared to radiant raises. If you want to master raise, you need to master the satchels, and that's a fact. You cannot be an effective raise main unless you uh, master the satchels. And even then, it comes down to gun skill and it comes to IQ plays where eventually it's going to get to the point where the satchel play is going to get a little bit obvious. And so you're going to have to ask your teammates to support you and set you up for those kills, right? So even though this is a pretty simple explanation of why race is actually very strong, she rounds up our number two pick as the second hardest agent to play. Before we get into our number one pick, don't be afraid to hit that like and subscribe down below. All support is truly appreciated. If you disagree with this list, comment down below. I'm kind of curious what you guys think the hardest Valorant agent to play is on console. Now, let's get into our number one pick. And to round up our number one, we're going to be talking about Cypher. And Cypher is easily the hardest agent to play. And it's solely to do with his predictability and when it comes to what he can do under pressure. What Cypher can do is basically control majority of the map, provide so much information for your team. However, the thing with Cypher is, if he's not spreading out his util and he's becoming predictable, if a Cypher player doesn't really play Cypher properly, he can be a detriment to your team. The difference between an elite Cypher player that's in Radiant compared to a Silver Cypher player is night and day. A good Cypher player is the worst agent to play against because he is constantly outsmarting you. All the nifty tricks and gadgets he can do with all of his skill, the fact that there's one ways he can do with his cages, to do all the sneaky corner stuff. Cypher himself can solely control at least half of Haven is saying something. Even not just Haven, Lotus. Once we get into Lotus for the people on Valorant console, if you haven't played it yet, Cypher dominates these maps for a reason. It is because he can spread out his util and when an enemy goes into a site, they have to be self-conscious be like, well, is it, has Cypher played here before? If he's not, if he's constantly changing locations, he is a nightmare to pick. That's why a lot of like hard rushing teams really struggle with a very good counter pick a Cypher. Like Cypher counters Jet, counters Raze. Even though Cypher's trips get countered by raise nades and shock darts. The fact that he can play in and out of his cage and he knows when enemies go into his cage and the fact that he doesn't make any noises. I want to say this right now. If you haven't seen a pro level Cypher main kind of like Nats is for an EU, I want to say this right now. You be wary until the days that Cypher players on console get as good as that guy on PC. <laughs> and to wrap up our number one pick, there is no other choice. We got Cypher. 